My name is Tim Trudgeon, and I'm a mathematician here at UNSW Canberra at the School of Science. Well, I say here, but this is my spare room, so what a terrible lecturer. He's lying from the start. You can't trust a word he says. What I'd like to talk about today is engaging students to learn more actively. One method I use for this is to encourage my students to build in a so-called sanity check into their calculations. If only we could check whether we're sane or not. So what do I mean by this? Sometimes you don't know what the correct answer is. If you're like me, that's most of the time. But a sanity check is a way of saying, can I spot an obviously wrong answer? So let me give you an example. I'll give you a frivolous example because I'm a frivolous guy. Suppose I said, I don't know, estimate the number of people in Australia who didn't pay any tax last year. You know, the scumbags. So suppose you got some spreadsheet data and did some whatever it is people do with computers, ones and zeros, did your thing, and you came up with an answer, 117 billion. I mean, it's just rubbish, isn't it? 117 billion people didn't pay tax in Australia out of a global population of 9 billion or so. Crazy. Put that answer in the bin. Who knows what the right answer is, but that answer can't possibly be right. Or, slightly less frivolously, I might say something like, estimate the probability of pulling the ace of spades out of two packs of cards or something. And if you do some sums, do some things, and come out with the answer of minus 1 over 10, well, your probability should be between 0 and 1. So minus 1 over 10 is right out. I see this start to pay dividends because students on an exam or on a piece of assessment will write an answer down and say, oh, actually, I know this can't be the right answer. I don't have time to go and figure out what the right answer is, but I am cognizant of the fact that this cannot be the right answer. And that does display an extra bit of learning. Thank you very much.